dear students in the previous class uh, i have discussed about the quality control and calculation in chapter 3 that is the uh, in process quality control test for capsules and today i talk about the uh, in process quality control and finished product quality test for the maintenance So we all know the definition of the ointments because they belongs to semi-solids. So that is the semi-solid dosage forms are defined as the preparations of drugs having semi-solid consistency which are to be applied to the skin uh, or surface of the eye or nose or rectum or vaccine. So I repeat, so the ointment belongs to semi-solid dosage forms. Now they are the preparations of the drugs having semi-solid consistency and which are to be applied to the skin, surface of the eye, nose, rectum, or resin. The types of semi-solid doses forms, that is the ointments, creams, paste, jellies, gels, plasters, and zero uh, mesolatins. So hence, the ointments, uh, these are the semi-solid preparations of the drugs either dispersed or dissolved in a suitable base so meant for application to the skin or the or it, can, or it can also be defined as high viscosity suspensions of uh, active ingredients in non-reacting vehicle so the different types of the ointments we know earlier i have talked about this uh, semi-solid only uh, different types of ointments, clean face, to face, and plasters. Now, the different types of ointments, they are medicated and unmedicated ointments. So, then the medicated ointments, that is, there are five again. Uh, the dermatological ointments are there for skin, ophthalmic for uh, eye, rectal ointments for rectal, vaginal ointments for vaginal, nasal ointments. They belongs to the medicated ointments. I repeat, dermatological ointment, thermic ointments, rectal ointments, general ointments, and the nasal ointment. The second one, another type of the ointment, the second one that is unmedicated. So when you come for uh, uh, the evaluation of the ointments, what are the different types of the evaluation? Tests or quality control tests for the ointments. So that is, uh, there are two aspects. That is, one is in process and uh, testing. Another one is the uh, finishing. During the process, what kind of tests we can uh, do for the ointments, and do, after finishing the products, what kind of tests are there? So let us see. So what are those? The first one is uh, in process testing. So what to be tested in in process? is uh, again some eight are there the appearance of the ointment color second one third one order uh, fourth one particle size fifth one viscosity sixth one consistency seventh one greetings and the eighth one is the texture so these are the eight uh, minimum in process testing to be done means evaluation testing for the ointments during the process so appearance color order particle size viscosity consistency greetings and so for the finished product testing, again we have plenty of tests to be conducted after finishing the ointment. So that is uh, one is the physical methods. So under the physical methods, uh, uh, we have again some uh, six are there. Uh, test of rate of absorption to be tested and uh, test of non-irritancy to be tested. Third one is uh, test of rate of penetration of the ointment. Then uh, test of rate of drug release, then test of uh, biological properties, then test of content uniformity. So these six tests to be conducted in the physical methods or the finishing part testing for ointments. Um, so B, that is second one is the microbiological methods. So what is that microbiological methods? That is number one is the test of microbial content. Then the test of preservative, 
uh, efficacy. So, so these are the various tests to be conducted for both the in process testing as well as the uh, finished product testings. So, let us look into each one by one uh, in process testing now. That is the appearance. One is appearance. So, the ointment appearance is considered as one of the important factor in the evaluation. It also should ensure whether the lot of the batch of ointment produced have maintained uniformity in its elegance, which includes color and odor. So that is appearance. Then the color. The ointments are evaluated for their color, and the second, the color distribution within the ointment, uh, it should be uniform and should not vary from a one lot to another lot. Uh, that is the second one. Third one, order. So even order also very important criteria for the ointments. It tells us the ointment is deteriorated, thereby it uh, indicates the stability of the ointment. So that is the reason order, color, appearance, all are very important. Then the particle size, next one. The particle size should be such that so it must be uniformly dispersed throughout the vehicle throughout the vehicle uh, in order to ensure the homogeneity of the product so then the particles are less than 74 microns in size equivalent to the mesh openings uh, in a 200 mesh the us standard CU series of impalable then milling to a finely divided, uh, finely divided state provides more surface area uh, for contact with the thermal site and increase the rate of dissolution of poorly soluble. So then the aggregation of the particle uh, becomes problem for those that are five microns or smaller than five. So then uh, let us talk about the viscosity. So the viscosity of ointment uh, is determined by a cap 2000 brick feet viscometer, which we all know the viscometer. Uh, in a clean and dry 250 ml beaker, so you can have take the test sample that is ointment and determine the viscosity of the test sample. As per the SOP of this commuter, that is the spindle numbers one to four. So then use each of the spindles for finding out the viscosity of the sample at a speed of 0 0.3, 6, 1.5, 36, 12, 30, and 60 RPM, respectively. So then record the dial reading and calculate the viscosity of a test sample. So thereby, ointments were tested for their rheological, rheological characteristics. 25 degrees centigrade using field spinter that is capped present this model. So the measurement was made over the whole range of the speed setting from 10 RPM to 100 RPM with 30 second between two successive speeds uh, uh, and their uh, as their realistical characteristics so 25 degrees centigrade. Uh, then consistency, consistency of the ointment can be evaluated. It should also be evaluated apart from this. The, the consistency or hardness of an ointment measured by the pentrometer. So in this case, uh, figure shows the pentrometer. The, prepare the test samples by one of the following procedure. They carefully and completely fill three containers uh, without forming air bubbles. Take three containers and fill the ointment. So then without forming any air bubbles. So level if necessary to obtain a flat surface. Store the samples at 25 degrees plus or minus 0.5 degrees centigrade for 24 hours unless otherwise it is prescribed. Then store these three samples for hours, I'll mention temperature, then apply a suitable shear to 
the samples for five minutes. Then melt these three samples and carefully and completely fill the containers without forming the air bubble. Then place the test sample on the base of the penetrometer as shown in the figure, and then verify that its surface is perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular to the vertical axis of the penetrating object. Then bring the temperature of the penetrating object to 25. To plus or minus 0.28, and then adjust its uh, position so that its tip just touches the ointment sample. sample. And release the penetrating object and hold it for hold it free for uh, minimum five seconds. Then clamp the penetrating object, measure the depth of the penetration, and repeat the test with two remaining containers. Like this, we need to. I repeat for all the containers which are filled with the test sample. Then the spreadability, another one. So the spreadability of the formulation was determined by uh, an operator suggested by uh, Matimir et al. Matimir et al. So which was suitably modified in the lab. And used for the study. So, what does it uh, definitely contains? Uh, it contains an wooden block, then which is provided by a pulley at one end, and then a rectangular ground glass, and then plate should be fixed on this. Plate. Then, in this case, now whatever the excess of ointment, about three grams, and the study should be placed on this uh, ground plate. Then, uh, so this whatever ointment is there, it should be sandwiched between the plate. And another glass plate having the dimension of fixed ground plate and provided with the hook. Okay. One kg weight was placed on the top of the two plates for five minutes, not far to expel the air. And then uh, to provide uniform filling of the ointment between the plates. So then excess of the ointment was scrapped off from the edges, whatever is coming out. Then the top plate was then subjected to pull off grams then with the help of the string attached to the hook and the time required by the top plate the cover distance of 10 centimeter be to be noted then a shorter interval indicates the better another one is the grittiness so in this case the grittiness of the ointment that is the particles in the powder should be impalable uh, to the uh, touch, otherwise, uh, grittiness results. Then, a small quantity of the ointment should be taken on the palm and then should be rubbed with the finger to feel for grittiness. So, it is also inspected for any foreign particles or uh, black particles. So this is how we do with the grittiness test for the ointments. Then the another one is the tube uh, tube extrudability. So how much amount of the amount of the uh, ointment will come out from the tube? It is filled in the tubes. So it is a usual empirical test uh, to measure the force required. Uh, to extrude the material from the tube. The material means in here is the ointment. So the method applied for determination of the applied shear in the region of the rear gram corresponding to shear rate exceeding the yield value and exhibiting the consequent blood flow uh, on such apparatus is described by the call. So in the present study, uh, this the method adopted for evaluating ointment formulation for extrudability was based upon the quantity in percentage of ointment and ointment extruded from the tube on um, application of finger pressure. So 
So the more quantity uh, extruded, better was extrudability. So the formulation of the study was filled in a clean lacquered aluminum collapsible tube. It's a nozzle tip of pipe in opening and applies the pressure on the tube uh, with the help of the finger. We have to apply the pressure on the tube. So then tube extr uh, extrudability was then determined by measuring the amount of ointment extruded through the tip and the pressure was applied on the tube. So this is how we do the tube extrudability test. And the final one is the last one is the texture. So this determines under defined conditions the force required to penetrate a semi-solid ointment. So this test applies to samples containing semi-solid mass retains its form. So then next, uh, let us talk about the minimum fill. So in this case, uh, we have to select a sample of 10 fill tubes and remove any labeling that might be altered in and uh, altered in the weight during the removal of the tube contents. So thoroughly cleans and dry the outside of the tubes by suitable means and then we act individually. Then quantitatively remove the contents from each tube, cutting the latter open and washing with a solvent if necessary, taking care to retain the closure and other parts of the each tube. Then dry it again and weigh each empty tube together with its corresponding parts. So the difference between the two weights is the net weight of the contents of the tube. Then from this, we can calculate the content of each tube and also calculate the average uh, minimum fill. Then in this case, the tensile strength uh, tester. So this method is useful for determining the tensile property of the excised stratum cornea of the skin. So it provides the information on the water content present in the stratum cornea and acts as a screening device for moisturizing ingredients. The stress or strain characteristics of the stratum cornea obtained from various sources can be uh, studied by uh, using this instrument. Uh, it also helps in knowing the effects on stratum cornea possible to the various treatments. And second one is the Argence gas uh, bearing electrodynameter. This instrument is useful for very much useful for determining and monitoring the uh, viscoelastic behavior of the also helps in determining the effects on the skin by passing it through various treatments. Another one is occlusive potential of uh, ingredients. So in this case, the occlusive potential of raw materials or ingredients which are used in the ointment uh, are to be determined by knowing the water diffusion rate. So the membranes used in this method can be cotton cornea for uh, neonatal rate of uh, or artificial. So next is uh, in vivo methods. So in vivo methods are, are very much helpful in providing the uh, information on hydration or the uh, moisturization process. Okay. So it involves the uh, sensitivity test. So these tests have to be performed in order to measure 
the irritancy sensitization potential and phototoxicity so in this case uh, the test is the 21 uh, uh, cumulative uh, irritation pass test that is one 21 days in this test the test material to be applied has to be applied daily on the same site where we have selected that is uh, four arms for example uh, so then 20 uh, for four arms of 24 objects are subjects under the optimizer tapes the scores are recorded daily and this test is carried out for 21 days or until irritation is produced on the four arm four arm this irritation is noted as maximum the, irrit the irritation is noted as the maximum score. The score ranges from 0 to 4, where 0 scores indicates no visible reaction or typical arrhythmia. Then, 4 score indicates arrhythmia with edema and uh, vascular, vesicular erosion. So, this test can be also be applied or uh, carried out with uh, fewer subjects and less application in the test material. Then, the Rice Polanski repeat the patch test. So the test is carried out on 100 individuals exclusively to measure the extent of sensitization and irritation of the product. Where to the the test material is repeatedly applied on the same site under occlusion for 10 alternative days. Then after a gap of seven days. The test material is again applied to the new site only for 24 hours. Then the scores are recorded after the removal of the test. The score is recorded after 24 hours. Then the same thing again 0 to 4, where 0 score indicates no visible reaction on arrhythmia, and 4 score indicates arrhythmia and edema. And Then uh, another one is the Rigman maximization test. Uh, this is used to measure the sensitizing potential of the product when it comes in contact with the skin. That is sensitizing. Uh, so then in this case, the ointment should be applied on the site that means where the skin by using the occlusive tape for 48 hours. So then the site is treated with uh, Sodium lauryl sulfate solution on each exposure and the then after gap of 10 days, and the ointment is again applied on the new site the occlusion for period of 48 hours. Then it is treated with again the same sodium lauryl sulfate solution SLS. In this case, the conclusion is the test gives the positive results, then the product should not be immediately discarded or considered. Actual risk arises if the product is used for longer time or the product concentration more or on the condition. And that's how the you have to take the conclusion. These are the uh, few in process testing that is in your evaluation of the ointments and then in the next uh, uh, class or my, in my video i will take up uh, the uh, finished product testing that is physical methods various physical methods are there then the microvascular methods also These are the few rems, uh, references. Thank you.